This week on Elkara Ham Radio, we're going to install a 6 meter repeater at the Monocello repeater site. We need to install the equipment and we also are going to set up an antenna on a test tower just to make sure everything is still working as advertised. Stay tuned as we install the 6 meter repeater on Elkara Ham Radio. Well, it's another beautiful day in southeastern Kentucky. We're at the Monticello repeater site on this scheduled work day. Again, we do scheduled work days and impromptu work days as additional work sometimes piles up. And uh, what we're doing is uh, taking a look at what Don has brought us. Now, normally on a work day, we cut grass, we uh, mow weeds, spray weeds, pick up trash, whatever needs to be done. But today we have something special. On this workday, we're going to install a six meter okay. repeater. Now, at different times on our channel, you've seen the different repeaters that we've had in both of our shacks. Two meter repeaters, 440 repeaters. Uh, we do APRS, we do DMR, we do a number of things. And a lot of times these are commercial repeaters. Although the DMR, for instance, is a put together repeater from just radios, our uh, GMRS Repeaters are put together from radios and so on. Today, we're going to be installing the 6-meter repeater, and this is a repeater that Don put together. He built this repeater, and it's actually been sitting in his, uh, his shack, if you will, his local shack on his farm, and it hasn't been really in, in a location where it can be used, where it can actually be hit. It's completely registered, but we wanted to get it out now where it can be used publicly. And there aren't a whole lot of six meter repeaters in our area. In fact, I think we're going to have the only one at this this point. Plus, Don has another, and we eventually plan to get it on the air at the 88 site. Here, KO4OSS is picking up those duplexers. These are actual cans for six meters. You can see how tall they are. Uh, Josh and I are about the same height, about 6'2". These cans are coming in at about 5'10", 5'11". All righty, now that we have the cans in place, we're going to move the rack over. This is a rack that Don had accumulated in all of his travels and looking at people selling different things. And this is what we're going to move the repeater into. Right now, it's on a uh, short rack that he had in his shop. And we're actually going to transfer the equipment into the rack. Again, we're always surprised, even those of us that have been round on now for four or five years and longer, just how much stuff he's accumulated and how he repurposes a lot of these things for his ham radio hobby. And again, uh, this just happened to be in one of his shops, and we're going to make use of it today. It did have a few bugs in it, and as we'll see in a minute, Josh is going to take it outside and and uh, let the bugs drop out of it. Uh, we, uh, we had a uh, storm of ladybugs and uh, other stink bugs and things like that. So we need to get those out. So Josh is going to shake this and turn it and all that, get all the bugs out of the cabinet. Right. And now that we've got most of the bugs out, we're going to have to do a little bit of cleanup on another workday. This rack is essentially ready for us to transfer the equipment into. Great to have Josh this day. He's a busy man, but he does come out to most of our monocellar repeater work days to help. So now you can see the short height rack that Don has been using for the six meter repeater. And he's built all of this basically himself. Uh, here are a couple of cooling fans that he's transferring over in a, a 1U panel. You can see we've got power. We've got the ability to see how much wattage is coming out. We've got the repeater elements itself and so on. And then we've got termination panels for the cabling. The other thing that's always uh, at, not as surprising now as it once was, was Don's got just, you know, boxes and boxes of screws and nuts and washers. And in this case, we also need these rack mounted um, clips that allow us to use the correct screws uh, to uh, attach each of the uh, repeater panels. I think we were actually looking for a number of those clips. We needed quite a few as we were doing the transfer. 
Josh is now removing a lot of the cabling on the backside of these components so that we can take them out of the short height rack and over. Now you can see the backside. The part that he's got his hands on right now is the actual repeater portion of this uh, uh, six meter repeater. Uh, we've got termination panels. We've got power distribution right above that, you can see. And then we've got to remove these cables. And to make this job even easier, of course, Don has most of these cables labeled so they can go back to exactly where they need to go. And uh, it wouldn't be too confusing to put it all back together again. All righty, so now we're starting to pull out that termination panel there on top. We thought we were going to put all of the pieces, uh, the components, back in the same order, but ultimately, based on the, the height of the rack and how the uh, antenna cabling was going to come in, we moved a couple of these pieces uh, into a different spot uh, in the stack. But the termination panel still went up top, and Don's going to get it started, and then we'll uh, uh, get the other screw going on the other side. Don is putting in some additional clips now. You can see a number of clips in the rack, the shiny silver that you see on the left-hand side there. And Josh is handing him various pieces of equipment. And again, we were thinking we we're going to put uh, everything back into its uh, the original order on the short height rack, but ultimately we ended up moving a couple of elements. Not a big deal. They all fit it uh, nicely together in the rack. It's just finding the right hardware to make sure everything is properly attached. So Josh is going to finish up pulling out the equipment here on the rack, and uh, we're just making sure that we don't bend any cables. And we're also, he's making sure that when we pull something out, if it's connected to something else, <laughs> we need to disconnect it so we can transfer it. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, our work days are not just installing six meter repeaters. Oh no, you can see here on this uh, site that we've got a, a, a decent amount of brush that we have to keep at bay. So uh, KK4JPX is doing a little bit of spraying to cut down on and to uh, get, in to get on top of weed control. Josh is finalizing, removing a couple of additional components. And here we can see Don installing. That, that portion right there is the actual repeater. And we'll see the back side of that when we start uh, connecting the antennas in just a little bit. We have all kinds of people that watch our videos, and uh, some of the old-timers, we'll call them, uh, have built repeaters like Don has in their past instead of just buying something to do it. And this is all homegrown. This particular repeater is uh, all homegrown. AC4DM definitely knows what he's doing. There's the power distribution down at the bottom. And you can see we've got uh, the various components uh, in the rack uh, at different heights. We're trying to get an idea of where we want to place things. And ultimately, we ended up making a decision to, uh, in fact, rearrange it just a little bit. We also uh, just found out, uh, putting the, the rack together here, that the power won't go through the hole down at the bottom. So we're going to have to make a couple of modifications to this rack so that we can get the doors back on. But for right now, we're just trying to get the repeater on the air. So here's where everything is now in the rack. We can see how much voltage we're pulling. We can see uh, some of the current draws and so forth, and the repeater itself. And speaking of the back side of the repeater, now you can see the, uh, the box here that Don has, the termination we put down towards the bottom, the distribution box, the fans, uh, as well as power uh, to power all of the equipment. The fans are actually on the very bottom. Those of you that are seeing the label there, JRMCO, Germco, stands for Junk Radio Manufacturer Company or something like that. I think it's Junk Radio Manufacturing, but that was a, a, a kind of a, a name that Don came up with. Now we're looking at the um, what we call the temporary tower. Now this is just a section of tower that was on site when we took over. And what we've done is we've repainted it. We've got the zinc paint on there so that it's nice and silver and hopefully won't rust as much. And we're going to use that to put a temporary uh, uh, installation of the six meter antenna. 
We already have the antenna on the mast, and there's Don way up there on top of the old shack, which we don't use anymore. It is 40 years old, something like that, and it leaked. But here's Don uh, putting together the coax that we're going to use to the, uh, the pigtail on the antenna, and he's taping it up to make sure that we don't have any water intrusion on that connection. Just finishing up, and then the last thing Don likes to do is he takes a section or a length of that electrician's tape, and he basically twirls it so that he can actually make a knot out of it. He'll wrap it around the cable and bring it back through the hole, and that'll prevent that end from coming loose and unraveling. Just a technique that he's picked up in his years of working with equipment. You can see the mast there, and the antenna was attached to that. Now Don's hooking up the coax. We brought it into the shack uh, from one of the holes that we had pre-drilled uh, for other projects. He's uh, got one part of the cans is for the input of the antenna, and there's another length of coax there closest to us that will go into the back of the repeater. Those cans are so tall compared to 2 meters and 70 centimeters because the wavelength is longer. Now, he also has this tuner, and uh, he, he's got a couple of these, I think, and he thought, well, if things on the antenna and the coax length and all that wasn't uh, you know, as low an SWR as, as possible, we could use this tuner, and sure enough, you can see the needles move. We can see how much output power, and we can also tune that antenna down to one-to-one. -to -one trying to adjust that transmitter side so we get maximum power out. So you can see the needles are where they need to be. Folks, if you're not a part of the club, get involved. There's so many activities here. We're just temporarily putting up the 6-meter repeater antenna and so forth and, and, and starting to use 6 meters more prominently. But get with your club. See what other types of projects they have in store uh, and maintenance activities. These repeaters need some maintenance throughout the year. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4 BDP Brian. Hope you enjoyed the video. 73.